by mostly birds and by the wind so they grow wild in our, in our hometown even though my hometown is rich in its natural beauty coming to america is one of my dreams because my father used to tell us that america is the land flowing with milk and honey so at an early age i began to dream that someday i'll be able to come to america to see for myself this land where milk and honey flows we didn't have much money. I was the middle child of seven siblings. I was the most adventurous. I remember there were many times when there was very little food on our table. We seldom saw canned goods. My mom would just gather all the seeds and then plant them and, that, and, and then grow them and cook and that's enough to supplement our rice meal for dinner. We seldom saw, seldom saw canned goods in my hometown. If you have canned goods, those are status symbols, especially if they are imported, like from the United States. So at one point, I told myself that someday when I grow up and find myself a job, I'm going to buy my mother bags of groceries with my first paycheck. <clears throat> I knew that groceries would be a meaningful gift to her. One college break at Christmas, I landed a job as a sales clerk in the department store, and guess what I did with my first paycheck? I bought two bags of groceries, took the bus home, and surprised my mother with the goodies. Tears fell off her cheeks when she held them. They were tears of joy because I believe helped nurture my dreams in life. In the department store, I met an American he was shopping for a baby item and at the same time looking for a nanny. Making the long story short, I took the nanny job. Said goodbye to my family, it was a sad goodbye, but at the same time I was excited. I thought that was the beginning of my journeys to the land flowing with milk and honey. We flew to this beautiful island territory of the United States, Hawaii. It was very exciting. The couple gave me the guest room with view of the Pacific Ocean. I was so excited. I thought I could see the Statue of Liberty already. <laughs> but you see, in, in Hawaii, it was very tropical. It's just like being back home. I thought that perhaps the real land of milk and honey may be found here in the mainland, here in North America. After um, about almost a year, um, Mr. N gave me the blessing to leave and I chose to come to California. But then at the same time, there was a man that I met in Hawaii. He continued to write to me and call me constantly. So, making the long story short, I flew back to Hawaii and married him. <laughs> Getting married in paradise, what more can you ask for? But yeah, something is still missing I could not clearly perceive. So I was able to convince Leo if we moved to California and started our small family. We're so blessed to have four children <clears throat> and now 13 grandchildren. When our, um, when our children started school, where Christopher came home, the first day of school with a big Bible in his hand, he said that his first homework was this so-called Bible verse memorization. It was John 3.16. So for the first time in my adventurous life, I opened up a Bible, and in my ignorance, I thought John 3.16 meant it will take three minutes and 16 seconds to read the whole verse. This turned out to be a rather short one. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Well, we, I memorized the verse also, yet it did not mean anything to me. You see, in my childhood years, I was taught that Jesus is the Son of God and that I should go to church regularly and say the prayers I had memorized. 
I thought following my church rules and rituals were enough to get me to heaven. One day, our dear president declared it as the year of the Bible, and at the same time, they were promoting a free book. I ordered the book, read it out of curiosity, and it contained eight testimonies of successful American businessmen and celebrities. They shared on how the Lord Jesus raised them from the emptiness of materialism and worldly ambition to a powerful life in Christ. And they explained that the powerful living is Jesus and that he is the source of wisdom in gaining peace and in getting right with God. As I read the book and the verses it quotes from the Bible, I began to understand that the Bible is God's word to me and his word opened my eyes to my own sinful nature and weaknesses. I learned that in God's eyes, none of us can live up to his standard. We all have sinful natures and all of us at some time or another have, some, have done something our way instead of God's way and that's what the Bible calls sin. But even though the Bible teaches that the penalty for sin is death, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And that Jesus came to earth, he was crucified, died, and resurrected. I learned that Jesus is God and that all the punishment I should have received for my sinfulness was poured out on Jesus when he was hanging on that cross. And that's when I truly understood the meaning of John 3.16. That very moment, I put my faith in Christ Jesus. I know that the moment I put my faith in Him, immediately God's righteousness in the person of Jesus Christ was suddenly transferred into my life, making me become a child of His, born in the family of God. First and foremost, becoming a believer in Jesus Christ made me realize the presence of Jesus Christ into my life. From a distant God, he became real. He became closer and personal. My life, however, from a life of trials and problems to a life of absolute peace. There were more trials, in fact, but I learned from the Bible that I have been forgiven and should be of good cheer. Confidence came from God's assurance that he has overcome the world, including my little world. And one of the great trials I face is this man I'm married with, my husband Leo. Leo has been raised in the same religion as my childhood, and he really resented my newfound faith. The more excited I got over my personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the more upset he became. At one point, he told our children that reading and memorizing the Bible was not the reason why they were sent to school, and that they should set the Bible aside until they are through with school and old enough to understand it. I said to myself, did my husband realize he's old enough to read and understand the Bible? <laughs> Although Leo never stopped me and the children from attending this new Sunday school, the new church, he made it sure that he will never go there nor drive through the church parking lot. It became so difficult that at night time I would gather the children together to pray on our knees that daddy will one day come to faith in Christ Jesus. Well, you should have met my husband. Those who know him can tell how good and gentle is the Lord's power of persuasion. It is so amazing how the Lord Jesus can make a way to change the person. Not by might, not by coercion, but by His Spirit and by His grace. Those difficult times with my husband eventually turned into joy when Leo finally gave up his pride and self-centeredness and embraced Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And I'm happy to tell you, he became one of the guides for Friendship Bible Coffees. And so one would think I have truly fulfilled all my dreams. My journey is from my little hometown to coming out to America and obtaining my American citizenship. 
Can I truly say that these journeys are the culmination of my earthly life? Can I truly say that America has been the answer to all my dreams and aspirations? I think I know the answer now. America is not the end all and be all of my temporal hopes and dreams. I can probably go around the world and change my citizenship as often as the laws will allow me to do. I realize, however, that no citizenship in this world can guarantee that I would find the ultimate purpose and meaning of my existence here. And if it is a question of citizenship, I would now declare that I treasure my citizenship in my Father's heavenly kingdom and my visa is my faith in Christ Jesus, my Savior. My father and I had similar dreams and ambition. He too loved adventure and as a child, dream of seeing and living here in America, which he was so fond of calling the land, flowing with milk and honey. Love to sing America the Beautiful. He even shed tears when he saw Disneyland because he wished his children back home were with him to see the sights and wonders of this American landmark. But when he became very ill and bed treated with cancer, however, it was very clear from the peace that he had the real faith in Christ Jesus. Amid his physical pain and concern for families is going to live behind, he had the blessed assurance of his dream to finally become a citizen of heaven in the company of his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which to me is the ultimate land flowing with milk and honey. A sequel to my life's journey is maybe best expressed in the verse when it says, The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. But sometimes in our journeys, we find ourselves facing a steep mountain that seems impossible to climb. One such circumstance took place in my life when our 18-year-old daughter, Annalisa, she was so vibrant and full of good health, was suddenly stricken with brain aneurysm on the week of her high school graduation. It was so unexpected that it seemed like the peaceful hill I was in abruptly turned into a cliff, gripping me and my family with shock and anguish. What does a mother feel and think of when you see your child fighting for dear life? But God came to my rescue. Truly, He always make a way. He delivered us from desperation and fear and assured us that in any trying circumstances in our life journeys, He will always be our guide, our source of comfort, and our counselor. I believe that what happened to our daughter was for the better because we have trusted the Lord Jesus completely for Annalisa's life and recovery. She is now a living miracle. God's healing power has touched not only her life, but many lives as well. As a result, our son Ryan at that time was only a, a teenager and he realized that anyone can be taken away in just a moment and that one has to know Jesus so that they can live with him forever. So Ryan prayed to God that God can use him. Well, I want to tell you now he is being used now as a chaplain for the U.S. Navy. Do I? And now he is serving the greatest commander, the great commander, his Lord and Savior. It was over a year ago, I, I had the privilege to go back to speaking for and out of town. My husband always with me, supports me with this, with this um, special um, calling. And he drove with me and um, he's very supportive. He loves Stonecraft. Came home and in about a, mom, a month later, uh, he was taking home unexpectedly. It was just like, again, another 
another peaceful Hilda Tiles in the are abruptly turned into a cliff gripping me and my children with anguish. What do you feel when you see your husband of 46 years fighting for their life? We said goodbye before Leo said his final goodbye to his children. He go to the verse in the book in Colossians 3.17 and he said whatever you do in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ giving thanks to God the Father through him we are leaving that message as my children and grandchildren are now and his last word was I am ready. I want to ask you a question. Are you ready? Am I ready? Remember the bags of groceries I gave my mother with my first paycheck? I was able to buy my mother bags of groceries when she came to America. She embraced every little gift that you gave her. There are three things she appreciate next to her American passport was her Costco card. <laughs> there is also one gift that I'm sure is and will always be the best gift that she has ever seen. And that's the gift when I asked my mother to accept from the Lord on her birthday. My mother accepted with tears of joy the Lord Jesus into her life and embrace Him as her personal Savior. Hallelujah. Do I still dream material ambition? I do in different light, light now. My fervent prayer day by day is for God to give me the grace to be able to fulfill my duties as child, to have the means to help others lead them to Christ to have the resources to buy every mother's and daughter's to have that groceries full of patience, faith, courage, understanding and hope and the ability to make them appreciate and accept God's free gift of salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. I want to ask you a question. Where is your eternal destination? Is it going to be in heaven with Jesus? The choice of your eternal destination is, of course, a very personal choice of yours. But if you would like to know with certainty that you'll spend forever with God in that promised place called heaven, you can make that decision today. And while you think about our final destination, I want to end with a close with the music as what Arlene will say. And it is a very familiar with everybody. If you could stay with me, 